Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I am going to talk about top 10 anime where the main character is overpowered from the start and surprises everyone. So if you are new to this channel then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that you don't miss any more videos like this in the future. Now without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Hainamaru Sumo. There are no weight classes in professional sumo. It's a brutal sport in which only the strongest survive, and anyone willing to put their skills to the test can enter the ring. However, there is a minimum size requirement to be a professional sumo wrestler, and despite his incredible talent and hard work, young Hainamaru Ushio does not meet that requirement. Hainashita Kaizen, a small boy with big dreams of reaching the highest class of sumo. He can only go pro if he becomes the high school Yokozuna, a title awarded to the strongest wrestler in high school tournaments. Ushio is under a lot of pressure and has a limited amount of time. If he can't demonstrate his abilities in high school tournaments, he may permanently lose his chance to go pro, and the odds are stacked against him. Instead of enrolling at Ishigami High, Japan's best sumo school, he enrolls at Odachi High and must build a sumo club from the ground up with the help of one devout member, Shinya Ozeki. Odachi High is the true underdog of the sumo world, but if Ushio is to make it professionally, he must push forward with all of his strength. Mushoku Tensai, Jobless Reincarnation Despite being bullied, scorned, and oppressed his entire life, a 34-year-old shut-in mustered the courage to attempt something heroic, only for it to end tragically. In an unexpected turn of events, he awakens in another world as Rudius Greyrat, resuming his life as a baby born to two loving parents. Rudius quickly adapts to his new environment by retaining his memories and knowledge from his previous life. He begins to demonstrate magical talent that exceeds all expectations, honing his skill with the assistance of a mage named Roxy Magurdia. Rudius is taught swordplay by his father, Paul, and meets Sylphiet, a young girl who quickly becomes his best friend. As Rudius' second chance at life begins, he strives to make the most of his newfound freedom while overcoming his traumatic past, and maybe one day he'll find the one thing he couldn't find in his previous life love. To be heroine. Following the gagged action theme of the first season, the second season, To Be Heroine, features an original story and a new cast of characters. You are about to leave your house when she enters an incredible world. An eight-year-old naked boy appears in front of her, and before she can comprehend the situation, she is attacked by assassins from a mafia group who are chasing the young boy. Even more unrealistic for you is the fact that the leader of this mafia was the target of another assassin's attack. Who are those naked children? Why did her shoe transform into a warrior? And most importantly, what kind of world did the eight-year-old boy come from? He's almost naked, just like the first one. He loses one of her shoes while fleeing the attackers, and through strange magic, her shoe transforms into a warrior who saves her by blocking the U entrance. Assassin's Pride On the verge of extinction, humanity has downsized and now resides solely in the city-state of Flandor, living in glass-encased cities. Beyond the domes, vicious lycanthropes thrive in the darkness, and among the citizens inside, there is a clear distinction between nobility and commoners. Noble blood allows them to use mana, giving them abilities that exceed human limits and greatly assisting them in defeating lycanthropes. Noble Melita Angel, who is already 13 years old, has yet to manifest her mana and attends an elite academy where she is mistreated because of it. The Angel family orders Kufa Vampir to become Melita's tutor in order to assist her. While Kufa appears to be merely a mentor, his job has an ulterior motive. He is to assassinate her if he confirms that she does not possess mana. Kufa's investigation eventually leads him to the conclusion that he must kill Melita. When Kufa sees her in a fight, he is struck by her unwavering determination, spirit, and belief in herself, and instead offers her a way to manifest her magic. 
Kufa abandons his mission and jeopardizes everything to keep his discovery of Melita hidden from the Angel family and his own guild as Melita learns to use mana with the help of Kufa's teachings. However, Kufa and Melita will soon realize that keeping their secret will not be their only challenge as unexpected trouble awaits them just around the corner. Our Last Crusade or the Rise of a New World Astral power is a force that pervades the world and is wielded by astral mages. The Empire, fearful of its destructive power, persecutes those who demonstrate their abilities. To flee their oppressors, the tormented mages established the nebulous sovereignty. Since then, the two countries have been at odds, with the war lasting more than a century. Iska, a talented knight, is sentenced to prison for committing the great crime of releasing an imprisoned witch. A year later, the Empire's leadership decides to release him on the condition that he hunt down a terrifying mage known as the Ice Calamity Witch. Iska agrees in the hopes of bringing the war to an end. The Ice Calamity Witch herself, Alice Lee's Alice Lou Nebulous XI, wishes for peace and is willing to go to any length to bring down the Empire. As Iska and Alice both yearn for a crusade that will transform the world into one without struggle, woe, or pain, Fate's strings bind them ever closer together, forging a bond that transcends mere coincidence. Blood of the Reprimanded Dog Following the devastation caused by a Third World War, an organization known as Vistio seized control of Tokyo and renamed it Tashima. Battle games known as Igura are held in its back alleys, overseen by the Vistio in which contestants battle and bathe in each other's blood to earn the chance to face the tournament's king, Ilri. Igura is not the only fighting tournament available. Blaster is a similar but vastly different game that forbids murder and the use of weapons. The only way to win is by knocking out the opponent. Akira, a young man isolated from his family, is known to be undefeatable at Beal at Stir. However, his life on the top is shattered when he is accused of murder. Unable to prove his own innocence, all hope is seemingly lost. That is until a mysterious woman named Emma appears and offers him a chance. Now to regain his freedom, Akira must participate in Akira and ultimately defeat Eat Ilri. Kyoku Suiri UK spirits live in the world hidden in plain sight. While the majority are harmless, a subset poses a threat to the fragile peace between yukai and humanity. Kotoko Iwanaga has served as a mediator between the two realms, resolving any supernatural problems that have arisen since she agreed to become their god of wisdom. Kotoko approaches Kuru Sakuragawa, a university student whose long-term relationship ended in an unfortunate breakup at a local hospital. Kotoko has feelings for him and suspects that something supernatural lurks beneath his innocent appearance, so she asks Kuro for help in assisting Yukai. Two years later, news of an idol being crushed to death by steel beams flooded the media. However, sightings of a faceless woman wielding a steel beam begin to emerge months later. Kotoko and her partner set out to stop this spirit from wreaking havoc, as is the case with any supernatural problem but this case may turn out to be far more sinister and personal than they could have imagined. Plunderer Alshia is a world ruled by count, numbers engraved on a person's body that represent any number relevant to their life. In Alshia, these counts determine a person's social status and power. If a person's count reaches zero, they are sent to the abyss, a place said to be worse than death. Haina a traveler whose count is determined by the distance traveled saw her mother being dragged down into the abyss. Determined to fulfill her mother's final wishes, she embarks on a journey in search of the legendary aces, heroes of the 300-year-old war who wore a white star next to their count. Hina meets Licked Back, a mysterious masked man with a negative count, and Nana, the owner of a tavern, while wandering around. Haina is tricked into fighting a military soldier while she is having a good time. Despite his negative count, Licht saves Haina and reveals another count, one with a white star, one of a legendary ace. 
Plunderer follows Heine and other Alshi residents as they learn the truth about their world, the Abyss, and the legendary Aces. The Sacred Blacksmith Forty-four years ago, the Valbanil War's surviving nations declared peace and prohibited the use of the devastating demon contracts that ravaged the land. Cecily Campbell, an inexperienced knight, is eager to follow in her family's footsteps and protect the people of the city with the sword she inherited from her father. Her first market challenge arises. Cecily steps in to restore order after a crazed swordsman wreaks havoc on civilians. Her weapon shatters as she becomes overwhelmed, but a skilled stranger wielding a strange-looking sword intervenes. After the situation has been resolved, Cecily visits a local blacksmith in an attempt to restore a family heirloom. She discovers, however, that her savior, blacksmith Luke Ainsworth, may be the only person capable of such intricate repairs. She seeks out the man who rescued her in order to have her prized sword repaired. However, a band of bandits unexpectedly attacks a convoy heading for the city. The attackers appear inhuman, and an ice demon appears. Luke suspects a demon contract is being used and summons a sacred power to defeat them. Meanwhile, a hooded figure lurks in the shadows, watching from afar. Who is this enigmatic villain, and what does his appearance mean for the couple? Dororo Dago Keijimitsu, the greedy samurai lordland, is dying, and he will do anything for power, even renounce Buddha and make a pact with demons. His prayers are answered by twelve demons, who grant him the power he seeks by assisting the growth of his prefecture, but at a cost. When Keijimitsu's first son is born, he lacks limbs, a nose, eyes, ears, and even skin, yet he lives. This child is thrown into a river and forgotten. However, he is saved by a medicine man, who provides him with prosthetics and weapons, allowing him to survive and fend for himself. The boy grows in lives, and despite his inability to see, hear, or feel anything, he must defeat the demons who took him as a sacrifice. With each death, he reclaims a piece of himself that is rightfully his. He wanders alone for many years until he meets Dororo, an orphan boy. In an unforgiving, demon-infested world, the unlikely pair of care of castaways must now fight for their survival and humanity. So, these were the top 10 anime, where main character is overpowered from the start and surprises everyone. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that you don't miss any more updates like this in the future. Also let me know some of your anime recommendations in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next one.